All righty. So I'd like to welcome to the show, John Taylor. And John was uh, what the first one actually who responded to my call to the listeners if they wanted to share their home theater. And John had posted his home theater on AVS forums and you entitled it Home Theater on a Dime. So that's what we're going to see today. John's Home Theater on a Dime. John, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jara. I appreciate it. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about the room and what you have in there and how you put it together? Okay. Um, the room was part of a basement build out. Uh, 2019, I had retired from work uh, all August of 2018. And, you know, by November, we're getting a little bored around the house. I said to my wife, hey, you want to start working on the basement? And uh, we had a rough uh, plans that we had built on CAD. And we were, uh, you know, started one wall and from one wall became another wall. And before you know it, we'd finished uh, about 1500 square feet. And within that was this 17 and a half by 15 and a half media room. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. Uh, you know, a home theater, media room. Um, it's, uh, it's a 7.2.4 Atmos room. Um, the equipment, you know, a lot of it was either purchased brand new or, you know, I, I kind of traded it up with somebody who might have been getting rid of something and was able to find a, a great deal on uh, Craigslist or Marketplace. So, you know, I kind of took advantage of the, some of those sales that people were, you know, doing on their own to move up in their own theater. So, um, give you a, a look of the room. As you can see behind me right now, you can see the shelves that actually hold uh, the movie that I've collected over the years. And in that shot, you can see uh, my rear surround, which is a Klipsch RB81 version twos. Um, those speakers, when they were brand new, were going for $900 a pair and I got them for 300. So those are some of the, the things that I tried to do when building the, the theater. Well, um, well, as you can going see over back here, to the um, the Craigslist, did you find a lot of equipment on Craigslist or was there another local source that you could uh, use to find this type of equipment? It was, I generally sourced it either from Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. And you found so, people local to you or did you have it? I, I did. That's that was the the incredible thing. So, you know, you look over here, we have these in wall uh, six inch woofer. Dome tweeter. I don't know if I can get the, I probably can't get it off right now, but uh, they're clips uh, in wall speakers. So there's my side surrounds. I got those for 89 bucks on marketplace. So, you know, those are some of the, you know, the, the deals I was able to, you know, secure, you know, through the different uh, venues. So if you turn around, here's uh, the front stage of the room. Um, when you look at the room itself, it's not a complete square. So the way the room is set up um, within the 15 and a half width, uh, there's about a, a foot and a half on either side that kind of create a little natural stage of its own. So you can see how that works. And in the front stage, you're seeing um, my towers, which are Klipsch uh, KLM 10s. And they're dual tens with a dome horn tweeter. Um, sound phenomenal. I was able to pick those up. They, they were built in 1999. Um, and I was able to upgrade the crossovers and the, the tweeters uh, with Bob Kreitz uh, components that he was selling for clip speakers. So really made a difference. Um, you could definitely tell that, you know, some of the, the crossovers were starting to age and uh, the difference in tightening up the bass and you know bringing in the sound was, was definitely there. Um, on the wall itself is an NU uh, 8,000, 82 inch Samsung uh, 4K smart TV. Um, the equipment itself, we have, uh, this is a Marantz SR7012 and with the cooling unit on top to keep it cool. Um, below it is a first gen Emotiva XPA3. To the right is an Marantz MM725 uh, stereo amp to power the rear 
uh, speakers for the uh, dot four. I have a Klipsch uh, RC62 center channel version two. We have the Sony, uh, which one is this? I think it's the, uh, the X800 um, 4K uh, DVD player, beautiful picture. And then a Paramax uh, MR4000 power conditioner. One of the uh, but, speakers but, I have. Before you move on to the uh, subwoofer, did I see on top of the receiver some sort of uh, like a Roku or was that an Apple TV or something? I, I actually, I'm glad you caught that. Oh. I have two. I have an, a 4K Apple TV All right. and a Roku Premiere. Do you use uh, one more than the other? I actually use mostly Roku in the house, but I got the, um, I got the uh, Apple TV because there was that Tom Hanks war movie that came out oh, a yeah. year ago. Yeah, and I wanted to see that in 4K, and it just wasn't coming through because I know that you know Roku does have um, the Apple app now, but the sound wasn't in you know the higher definition, and that's what I was looking for. So I picked that up, and I do a lot of streaming, even though you can stream to the receiver um, directly, but I like streaming through uh, the Apple uh, TV as well. So, so between I'm kinda, the Roku, kind of like in between both. Between the Roku, Apple TV, and the Blu-ray player, what do you use the most? Um, right now, and that's interesting because I know where Braden lands on this. We actually use the Roku mostly in the house. I got you. Um, I've got Rokus on. <laughs> it's crazy. We have eight TVs in this house, and everyone has a Roku at least. Um, the Apple TV, though, the, the, I think the quality is just a hair better when it comes to, you know, the sound and even, you know, the 4K content is just a little bit better there. Um, but the value with the Roku, you know, it's hard to beat, you know. Do you have a cable service? I didn't see a cable box. So you must be using IPTV. I do, I do have cable service. Oh, okay. um, I have uh, Verizon. So you... here's my, my box is right there. Actually. Ah, there it's it is. Cool. Okay, I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah, so that's a 4K service from Verizon as well. And you have all those wired directly into your receiver? Yep. Okay, and the receiver is what's switching everything up to the TV. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the hub of everything okay, in gotcha. the, uh, the theater room. So, um, and then, you know, where we left off, we have the, uh, the subs. I have two subs. One is the SVS um, PV2000 Pro, which came out two years ago. It was a brand new version to replace the uh, previous uh, PV2000 sounds phenomenal, and the thing I like about it is they've given you that that uh, app on your iPhone where you can really customize the sound and, and dial it in. Um, and then I was looking to get another sub. I used to have two clip subs in here that were 10 inch subs. They were, you know, more of the affordable type. Didn't sound bad. You know, the three of them together really sounded nice. Um, but I really wanted to try and get the sound to be you know, more matched with the sub. So what I ended up doing was picking up a second sub, uh, an SVS sub. Um, originally what I had done was gotten the PB1000 and that was really more for uh, space constraints in the room. And then right when I purchased the PB1000, it came out with the PB1000 Pro, which has the same uh, app that you can use as the 2000 Pro. So I sent back the, the initial one and I picked up this one for an additional hundred dollars. It was just a no brainer to me. And the thing that's neat about this is going from the SVS uh, PB1000, which was a 10 inch port with a port. This is now a 12 inch sub, uh, woofer with a port and it, dual ports. And the thing that I like about it is you can put plugs in it. For if you want to listen to music to tighten it up, both the, the 1000 pro and the 2000 pro allow that. So that's a pretty nice feature to have as well. All right, very cool. Ugh. So nice looking and, room. Do, and do you? Oh, sorry, the Atmos part. Yeah. Yeah, and I was just going to say, you know, in the ceiling, I've got four six by nine uh, in ceiling or six inch uh, in ceiling uh, speakers. So that's our Atmos right there. What's your favorite Atmos movie? Oh, there's a couple of good ones out there. You know, I, I really like. Um, oblivion that's a good one the sound 
you know, just coming over top, you know, is the, uh, the spacecraft flies over. Um, there's another, the, um, what is that, Day After Tomorrow, the one with Tom Hanks where he keeps reliving the same day over and over again. It's uh, a futuristic war movie with aliens. I don't know if you've seen that one. No, I haven't. I'll have to check that out. It's, it's yeah. pretty neat, you know. And so, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, this is, there's a lot of movies to, to choose from here. Yeah. I've got about 600. Wow. Well, that's a nice library there. So um, it's nice when you have the Atmos wired, I think you get the best effect. Uh, in my room, I didn't have the luxury of, of getting my speakers wired. So I use the type that uh, I put a speaker on top of my floor standing speakers yeah. and bounce it off the ceiling. You, your room layout is one that I think it would work nice in bouncing off the ceiling because you don't have, I don't think I see a ceiling fan or anything in the middle there. I don't. So that kind of uh, lends itself a little bit more to that. Uh, I think if I ever get the gumption, I may get the ceiling wired. Definitely when I move, I will get the, the ceiling wired for Atmos speakers. So quick question. Do you, I yeah. did ask you uh, to give me a price on what you spent. By any chance, do you have the price that you paid alongside what it would have been if the equipment was brand new? I do. I do. Okay, and, perfect. You know, I, I took a little time and, and put it out on paper, but you know, overall, uh, everything that I purchased, I spent about seventy six hundred dollars. Okay, just for the equipment, and uh, what I would have paid if I had paid retail would have been about twelve thousand dollars. But that's still not terrible for considering what you have a seven point uh, no. two point four system. That is yeah. pretty impressive, and. Uh, at any point in time down the road, if you ever wanted to, the only thing I might do is possibly put a bigger screen up there. But other than and, that, and you're, that's, you're set. Yeah. And that's the, you know, the challenge. Do I want to go with the, um, go with the uh, short throw projector or, you know, do I try and figure out because I missed this in my wiring plan was to, you know, future proof this and throw a, an HDMI down the center of the ceiling to have a, a you know, a projector in the back. Yeah. But, you know, those are some of the things, you know, when you're doing your planning, you want to make sure that you try to um, have your wiring plan as detailed as possible. Um, I tried to make sure that, you know, for subwoofers, you know, just to have different locations, I put a, a subwoofer plug in the mid wall and I have a subwoofer plug in the back wall so that I can go and have the subwoofers in different locations. You know, you know, I just didn't want to just have the, the front stage have two subwoofers and then, you know, you do your crawl and you realize, you know what, the, the bottom end is an evening out. So you need to make sure that, you know, you have different locations where you can try the sub. Yeah, that it, that's actually a really good idea. If you've got your walls open to do something like that, I I'd probably put a subwoofer cable uh, in each wall, including the back, just in case you never know where you're going to need yeah. to put a subwoofer. And, and that's what I ended up doing. I, I ran them, you know, and you can see here's one that's empty because I didn't need to use it there because I used it on the other side. Yeah. You know, so, so that, and you got some nice uh, decorations there. That's fantastic. Yeah. Now, not including the price of, you know, what work you did with the drywall and finishing and, and that kind of stuff, spending um, eight grand uh, wisely. I think you put yourself a nice theater together and I'm, I'm seeing your seating. So nothing specific to home theater, but very comfortable. I could see yeah. myself reclining back there with, uh, you know, a drink and watching a sporting event or something. And Oh, absolutely. And being in the absolutely. basement, you don't even have light issues. So you could have, yeah. if you wanted to, you could have put a projector up there and I don't think you would have had any problem. But you know what? I don't like watching some things in the total dark. Movies, I don't mind. But a sporting event, I, I don't want to watch that in total darkness. So I think right. this is a better way to go. Yeah, and you know, the nice thing is, you know, I don't have smart lights and, you know, I know I listen to you guys all the time. You're always talking about, you know, the uh, Christian and, and all the different type of uh, lighting switching that you can do. And that is something I definitely want to do um, so I can automate it from my seat and, you know, get even lazier than I am right now. But, um, you know, every one of my lights at least is, is dimmable. So, you know, I can turn on different combos. I can have just the front stage on, come over here and, shut off these lights you know and then the front stage is just lit you know i have a side lamp 
you know, if I'm reading there, you know, just, you know, just for ambient light. Um, this is mainly for watching television, watching movies, for listening. And this is, I didn't show you the other day for listening. I have a little tube amp set up with another pair of clip speakers. And this is a crazy thing, Aura. These clip speakers, which ones are these? I think they're the, these are the um, KG3s. They're an eight inch woofer with a horn dome tweeter. My wife found these on a, a website called Buy Nothing through Facebook. It was like a market group. Buy Nothing, somebody was giving them away. So I said to my wife, grab them, I'll take them. I brought them home. Um, there was a, a known issue with these speakers where uh, the glue would dry out and they would start to rattle. So I took the time to just take them all apart, re-glue everything, make sure all the connections were good and they sound phenomenal. So for the price of nothing, I'm very happy with these speakers. <laughs> That's incredible. That's Isn't something that we should all look for. That's why, you know, it makes sense. Just keep looking in your uh, uh, either Craigslist or whatever, just maybe once a week, go on there and do a search. You might find something that somebody doesn't realize uh, they have, or they just want to get rid of because they no longer need it. I've given away a lot of electronics to friends that I just didn't need anymore. And they were very happy to take it. So, yeah. um, John, thanks so much for uh, sharing with us. And um, I really appreciate it. So this is the first uh, time we've done this and hopefully we'll do more. We're learning how to do it. And, um, you know, maybe our skills will get better. But no matter what, John, you were the first, uh, first one to share. And uh, I greatly appreciate it. If you got any comments, you can send it to me, ara at htguys.com. Um, you could support us through our Patreon website, uh, patreon.com slash HTTV podcast. And uh, John, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, no problem. Look forward to the show.